Hello there. Welcome to the session on moving from raw data to ML faster with BigQuery and Vertex AI. My name is Polong Lin, and with me today is Erwin Huizenga. And we're both developer advocates for Google Cloud at the intersection of data and AI. I'll be giving an overview, and then Erwin will show a demo of data to ML and beyond at the end of the session. So let's first talk about the problems from data to ML. For many organizations today, there is still a barrier between data and machine learning that slows down innovation. Data can be big, multi-formatted, uh, in different places, uh, hard to discover, and AI uh, ML systems are often thought of as a separate and sort of siloed from the data warehouses and data lakes of an organization. And, and this sort of results in slower speed and capacity to innovate quickly with AI and ML. So in order to address this, we need to have a common understanding of how data flows from raw data to machine learning and downstream insights and activations. And you'll see here how data engineering helps prepare the data sources for data analytics, which then enables model development, i.e. your machine learning models, followed by deployment and serving, uh, and then uh, uh, finally using the results of the models to inform decision-making or to serve applications directly. And importantly, you may also want to automate and orchestrate these together where possible as well. So how does Google Cloud help with all of this? With Google's data cloud, uh, we cover all users, all processes, roles, applications, uh, data types across the whole stack. And all of our data and AI services are part of a, a unified platform um, and remove historical workload barriers that tend to pop up between uh, different applications. So how do you begin on this journey to innovating faster with ML, uh, to uh, personalizing your products and services better with ML, uh, to, to, to do better forecasting um, so you can prepare rather than to uh, respond uh, using ML? Well, to do that, we have a crawl, walk, run journey we like to share with you on how you can get up and running as quickly as possible with uh, data to ML. So if your data is stored in BigQuery, uh, in cloud storage, or even elsewhere, you can use Vertex AI Workbench as a notebook first approach towards doing data science with your data. Now this may seem simple, but this foundation enables your data analysts and data scientists to use Jupyter Notebooks running on Google Cloud to uh, explore your data, to access your data, to create insights and visualizations uh, rapidly. And this opens up the door for a common environment for those comfortable with uh, SQL, with, with Python, R, TensorFlow, PyTorch, Apache Spark, you name it, uh, to use notebooks uh, as a way to get some insights from your data right away. And I'll bring here as well uh, this quote from a customer of Google Cloud, Subaru Corporation, who says the following, uh, they say, I chose Google Cloud for many platforms because at the time of selection, it had multiple managed services such as Vertex AI and uh, the managed notebooks option and Vertex AI training that were useful for AI development. And, and that's, a, that's a great quote because it quickly segues into this next uh, section on training and deploying your ML models. So notebooks with Vertex AI Workbench becomes a, a seamless kind of path into the whole spectrum of any data science and machine learning work for your organization. Uh, from exploring your data in BigQuery or accessing your data in cloud storage using BigLake uh, to pre-processing your data, whether that's in BigQuery, Dataflow, or uh, Spark with, with Dataproc, um, to training your model through AutoML, uh, BigQuery ML, which is your machine learning within your uh, BigQuery environment, uh, or custom models, uh, which could be you know, TensorFlow, PyTorch, Scikit-Learn, XGBoost, your favorite package, um, which can then be all registered, these models into uh, model registry on Vertex AI. And then from there, you can do model predictions and uh, have built-in explainable AI. And this could be done with uh, uh, BigQuery ML or using Vertex AI endpoints. And then you serve those predictions um, to some downstream applications 
or to inform decision making depending on your needs. So as part of this overall flow, we're also happy to announce that model registry is now in GA. So you can register any of your models in model registry, whether it was trained using AutoML, BigQuery ML, or custom models like Scikit-Learn, XGBoost, TensorFlow, PyTorch, and so on. And model registry lets you easily reuse models, uh, use labels and aliases to keep track of your models, and also version your models as well. So for model registry, you can easily um, deploy your models to Vertex, Vertex AI endpoints as well, and it can really easy to push your models into production and then do your predictions thereafter. And there's also a fantastic SDK in Python to help you use your models in model registry along the way. So that was uh, crawling with your notebook environment and walking with uh, your model training, uh, development, and deployment. By taking it a step further, how do you run with machine learning? So this is where you start thinking about orchestration and automation akin to an ML platform. So you can add in relevant ML ops capabilities like CI, CD, a feature store to do your feature management and sharing, uh, Vertex AI pipelines to stitch together various operations into a single pipeline flow. Um, and I also wanted to uh, raise a quote from a customer here, uh, APNA, who say that their data scientists traditionally spend the majority of their time obtaining the data, massaging the data, removing outliers, performing everything that comes under the category of machine learning or ML ops. And Vertex AI automated most of that burden, making everything simple for us. So that's a, that's a great quote. And thank you, uh, Apna. Um, so uh, I just wanted to hone in on a little, little bit around uh, pipelines here when it comes to orchestration. What does that sort of thing look like when it comes to orchestration here with pipelines? So if, if you imagine, instead of running individual training or deployment steps, manually or ad hoc, you can instead stitch them together using components of a Vertex AI pipeline that you can then trigger, schedule, or execute as a single uh, flow. And we're also happy to announce that these components now support BigQuery ML as well. So you can use Vertex AI pipelines to easily stitch together various BigQuery and BigQuery ML operations, either on their own or combined with other operations like training AutoML, and custom models alongside BigQuery ML to see which model performs the best before deploying your best model. So with crawl, walk, run from data to ML and ML ops, uh, you, what else might be new, you might be wondering. So how about tapping into the value of unstructured data using machine learning where your data is stored in your data lake? So this is where you can have data stored in Google Cloud Storage, like your images and text files and make them accessible in BigQuery or Big Lake and apply machine learning models directly where the data is stored. So what does that look like? Now, imagine that you have um, a vacation rental company and uh, they want to predict the click-through rate of rental homes on their website. And their current uh, prediction model, their current uh, machine learning model only looks at structured data. So think of that as the, the size of the homes the number of rooms in those homes, uh, the location of those uh, rental properties. And they have thousands of images of homes not being used at all in part of their model training as well. So if they want to apply machine learning to those images of homes today, that might be a completely different flow for their data scientists as opposed to where they're doing their modeling of their structured data. So with BigQuery's new capabilities, uh, you can actually use BigQuery to index your images, your JPEG files or your PNG files your, uh, that are stored on Google Cloud Storage. And so you can build this connection between BigQuery with Cloud Storage via what we call Big Lake. So once you have that, you can then import a computer vision model like ImageNet, which takes in images and converts them into vectors that ML models can use as inputs. So in other words, we can use BigQuery ML with the computer vision models on those images that are stored in cloud storage, and then get the prediction results as part of a BigQuery query, like any other SQL query that you might do. So in other words, this unlocks AI and ML capabilities directly in BigQuery, where before image data is uh, unstructured and therefore rather separate from the structured data on these houses, 
um, and now they're combined together in BigQuery. And this enables data scientists to combine structured and unstructured data to easily train even better machine learning models. So with that, I want to hand it over to Erwin uh, to give a quick demo of the overall data to ML and beyond uh, flow. Uh, Erwin. Thank you very much, Paul Long. And thank you for the great presentation. We now know how we can go from data in BigQuery to having a model deployed on Vertex AI. We know how we can start with crawling, walk, and then run on Google Cloud. Let's now see how that works in our demo. Let's dive into the demo. In this demo, I will show you how you can easily go from crawl to walk and finally to run using BigQuery and Vertex AI. As mentioned by Paul Long in the presentation, if you're a data scientist, business analyst, or machine learning engineer, and you get started on the Vertex AI platform, a good place to start is with Vertex AI Workbench. If we go to Vertex AI, we can navigate to Vertex AI Workbench. This is where we can start our notebook environment from where we can leverage all of the Vertex AI services and capabilities. So when we go to Vertex AI Workbench, we will see two different options. We have Managed Notebooks and we have User Managed Notebooks. User Managed Notebooks lets you create and manage a virtual machine instance that has Jupyter Lab environment pre-installed for you. You can also install your favorite or choose your favorite libraries. We have a notebook Managed Notebook environment, which is a fully managed Jupyter-based scalable notebook environment. I'm using a managed notebook environment today. I already created one. So let's go to our managed notebook environment. Let's go to Jupyter Lab. So as a data scientist, business analyst, machine learning engineer, it is often challenging to access or get access to data that we need for our use cases. That's why we made it easy and we built integrations with Google Cloud Storage and BigQuery so that it's easy to explore and access data that sits in BigQuery. So if we go to the left, we can here find all of the BigQuery data sets that we have access to. It could be the public data sets or data sets within your organization that you have access to. From here, we can start exploring these data sets. So for example, we can see the details regarding this data set or the schema of our data set. In this case, we have Google Analytics data that we're using. And from here, we can also query our table. So we can write a SQL query, submit it to BigQuery, and get the results in our notebook environment. We can even easily use this query and submit it to BigQuery and generate a pandas data frame in our notebook that we can then use to explore this data and to train a machine learning model if we want to train a custom model. So let me copy this code. And let me put this in the cell and submit this query to BigQuery and return the results in a pandas data frame. So from here, we can start then further analyzing, exploring, preparing our data for training a machine learning model. So when you want to train a machine learning model using Vertex AI or BigQuery or data set that sits in BigQuery, there's different options for you. You can train a custom model, you can leverage AutoML, or you can leverage BigQuery machine learning. So in this case, we're gonna train a model using BigQuery machine learning. So through the SQL interface, we're gonna train a logistic regression. And as mentioned, now we have the option to register your model on Vertex AI model registry. So your BigQuery ML model will be registered on the model registry. We can add some aliases. So from here, we can submit this code to BigQuery, and we can train our BigQuery ML model. Of course, training a model takes a bit of time, so I already pre-trained the model for us. So if we go to Vertex AI, and we navigate to Vertex AI model registry, this is where we found, will find all of the models that we registered on Vertex AI. So here you also find our BigQuery ML model that we already trained. So from here, it's very easy to deploy our model into production. So we say deploy to endpoint, we specify an endpoint name. We can also specify a um, traffic split, the number of compute nodes, the maximum number of nodes for auto scaling, the machine type that we want to use for our scaling, and we can then deploy it. I've already created an endpoint for us. 
So if we go into this endpoint, we will see that you also have the option to deploy multiple models in this endpoint, do a traffic split, set monitoring, and even set alerts to detect if something is wrong with your model. Now you'll probably ask, so the process until now, our walking has been pretty manual. We, we fetch data from BigQuery, we could do some data exploration, we train a model, we deploy this model, but it's been a manual process. So now it's time to add, to start running and add our ML ops capabilities into what we just created. So we want to automate and orchestrate the workflow that we just gone through. So for this, we can leverage Vertex AI pipelines. So I already pre-created a pipeline that goes through the steps that we just discussed. It creates a BigQuery model. It registers, of course, that model, model registry. It evaluates the model. It creates an endpoint and it uploads that endpoint, uploads the model into that endpoint. The advantage of having a pipeline is that we can automate it, orchestrate it, and keep track of lineage and artifacts that are related to that pipeline. So we can, for example, keep track of our relation metrics of the endpoint that we created. Now you will probably ask, how do I go from the steps we saw earlier to creating a pipeline like this? Again, this is very easy to do. So if we scroll all the way down in our notebook, I will show you the code to create this pipeline. For creating pipelines, we can create TensorFlow Extended Pipelines, or we can use Kubeflow Pipelines to create a pipeline. In this case, we are leveraging Kubeflow Pipelines and the pre-built um, components that we have for BigQuery ML that we talked about. So we have an, a step, a component that, create, that trains and registers a model, there's one that evaluates our model, that one that creates our endpoint, and then the last step is uploading our model into our endpoint. The advantage of build, using these pre-built components is that we only need to specify the parameters. So for example, what is our query? So you will probably recognize this query. This is the query that we used earlier to train and register our model. And then also, of course, you set the location, the project, and then the output of that component goes into our model evaluation operation. We then create an endpoint and we then deploy it. So once we defined our pipeline use, using the KFP DSL, we generate a, um, we compile our pipeline into a JSON file and we then upload the JSON file, submit it for a run to Vertex AI pipelines. So from here, you can easily also clone your pipeline and run it again with maybe different configuration. So we've seen how we can go from crawl, get data from BigQuery, do some analysis, walk, train our first models and deploy our model as an endpoint, and then run by adding ML ops capabilities through Vertex AI pipelines by automating and orchestrating this pipeline. So that was our demo. We're at the end of our presentation. So I want to thank Paul Long again for the great presentation. And if you want to learn more about how you can go from data to AI, please have a look at our data to AI workshop. And we hope to see you soon.